opening scripture this morning is um, not a redux from last week, but from Psalm 139 once again. And it'll be part of the message this morning. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. And all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them even came to be. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we could spend together this morning to worship and to fellowship and to praise and to pray. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon what we say and do here today. Be with us and fill us. Help us to set our hearts and our minds upon you because your word says you will keep in him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you because he trusts in you, Lord God. So, Lord, be blessed by what we do here this morning as we try with our frail beings to honor you and bless your name, in which we pray. Amen. So, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. As for you, each one of us, we were dead in our transgressions and sin in which you used to live, we used to live, when we followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated, him, seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Some years ago, I watched a movie called Nothing But Trouble, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, Demi Moore. Silly, kind of stupid movie, but I thought it was well done. And it was funny and fun. And so I recommended it to my brother and sister-in-law I told him it was a good movie. <laughs> and I got the raised eyebrows the next time I saw him. What the heck are you thinking? That was stupid. I thought it was a good movie. They thought it was stupid. There are things that we all like and think that are good. Good food. Gail Frisk loves cabbage. Not everybody jumps, is willing to jump off a cliff to get some cabbage. But Gail Frisks loves cabbage. I like things my wife doesn't really care for. She likes things that I don't understand why she could eat them. <laughs> we all have tastes and likes. And they, they're, we consider them good because they're colored by our likes, our tastes, our preferences, even our priorities. You know, the car we drive. Some people will drive only the most cheapest, rat-infested, 
easiest way to get out of not having a ride, while other people are very fussy about their rides. Rick is a collector of vehicles. He <laughs> loves his vehicles. He just loves it. I've been told he spends hours on the computer looking for the buy, and some of the things he's come up with over the years are really special. He's got a Saab now that's just amazing. It's like brand new. You know, Mr. Keith, he has his preferences on cars. Anything that doesn't have fuel injection is fine with him. <laughs> he likes older cars, and he takes great pride in his prize-winning cars. And, you know, I want one that's not going to break down that I don't have to worry about. So we all have things about our preferences that color our, our, our idea of what is good. So let's go to the next. Oh, you got them? That's the verse we're going to focus on today. So let's jump ahead to the next line. The word good in Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, is a special word. And I have focused on this word more than once in the past. There are more than 10 words in the Greek that are translated as good. This word, agathos, is a very special word because, let's go to the next one, it, in, it means it's intrinsically good. It's simply good in nature. And it's good whether it is seen to be or not. And it is the widest and most colorless of all words with this meaning. So it is not something that is good because it's my preference. It's good because it is good. It is simply good. And... Is there one more? Yeah. These are um, like from Strong's, the guy who did that huge concordance. Inherently, intrinsically good as to the believer. So it's specifically meant here in terms of something that is discussed or used because it, it applies to people who believe in Christ. And this is the word helps. It describes what originates from God and is empowered by him in their life through faith. So the scripture for this morning says, we are created, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, to do things that originate from God and are empowered by him in our life through faith. That's a very important concept to get a hold of and think about. And I got excited yesterday as I was going through this and preparing because of the reality of what this is saying about me and about you. And I kind of went off on a tangent Wednesday night and got kind of excited because we were all consumed with Trump and all the junk going on in the world. And I says, wait a minute, we got to bring this, this train back onto the track a little bit here. You know, we're Christian people. And we are, create, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus through good works. And so I started to preach on this and it codified many of my thoughts and made it easier to prepare over the last couple of days. So I want to take a look at a few of the things in this chapter, verse 10. We are God's workmanship. That word workmanship or handiwork refers to something that is like a work of art. And it, it implies the only to God that we are a work of art created by God and understand this, that the creation process begins when we, when we are in Christ. So when we come to Christ, Something new begins within us that is God's creative work within our souls. And it, these things have to do with creation. Only God can make what is from what was not. Only God can make something that wasn't there before to make it be real. In Hebrews 11.3, 
It says, by faith that we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And if you remember the idea that's presented, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was in chaos. Wreck and ruin are the Greek or the Hebrew words. So there was a situation in the universe that existed that God spoke into and brought order out of disorder. Think about your own soul. God speaks. We understand who Jesus is. We accept his love shed abroad in our hearts through Christ Jesus. And it begins a process of recreation within us. So we are God's work of art created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new is here. I'll tell you, there are many times in my life as a believer that I have thought, the old hasn't gone. The new certainly pushes me forward and keeps me going and going to the throne of grace and coming to him and, and asking for his love and his mercy to be shed abroad within my life and to wash me and cleanse me. But it's because I am washed and cleansed by the blood of Christ and reconciled to God and because Jesus has made peace with the Father that we have access to God by the Holy Spirit. And all those concepts are in the following scriptures of chapter, of verse 11 and following, if you'd like to read that later. But we are a new creation. And we are created in Christ because of the freedom that we have. We are no longer bound by the law as long as we are walking and keeping in step with the Spirit. If we bind ourselves back to the law, then grace is of no effect. But when I recognize that I am in Christ, forgiven in spite of my faults, in spite of my shortcomings, in spite of my lack of victory in certain areas in my soul, which I continue to pursue as a believer in faith, that God's recreative work within me is going to produce fruit. And it is going to take me to the place where I am what he has called me to be even more so than I am now. But the purpose for all of this is not so that we can indulge ourselves and enjoy life, uh, but it's so that we can do good works, colorless works. What originates from God is empowered by him in our life. And this is like the broadest idea of good. Remember, it is not colored. It is intrinsically good. Now, God created man and woman in his image and in his likeness. And as such, all men are created in his image, period. Even the homeless creature who is quite offensive and begging for money on the side of the street, that is someone who is created in the image of God. And God created within that person a conscience and a mind and a soul and is, has a spirit that will live forever in whatever condition. But we know this, that good works to be done by the believer as a creation of God in Christ Jesus are colorless, broad, can be seen as good because of their intrinsic nature. Now I can do something that I think is good, but someone else not necessarily see that it's a good thing to do. And we have all been in that situation. But when we are keeping in step with the Spirit of God, then we are able to understand 
what he wants to accomplish through us. In Romans 2, 14 and 15, just to enhance that business about in the image of God, Paul is talking about those who don't have the law. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves. Even though they do not have the law, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, created in the image of God. Their consciences also bear witness, and their thoughts sometimes accuse them, and at other times even defend them. So instinctively, because Ben is created in the image of God, even those who do not know the law, the Ten Commandments, do not understand what God requires them, have it written on their hearts and on their souls. And we can see quite plainly that there are plenty of people in the world who harden themselves to this because of sin. It hardens. But in Galatians chapter 5, this is what the scripture says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. They are colorless because they are seen as good because they are good intrinsically. Agathos. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. That is an interesting concept. Keeping in step with the Spirit. And that's why Paul, at the end here, he says, which God, these good works, God prepared in advance for us to do. Now there is a more literal translation of those words that makes a better understanding. And I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. Not just prepared in advance for us to do, but he prepared things in advance for us to do because that would be our way of life as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Free from sin and death, free from judgment because of the blood of God, free from the wrath of God because of the blood and sacrifice of Jesus, clothed in righteousness before God because of what Jesus did for us. In fact, I read Psalm 139 at the beginning, and I wanted to say these things, these last words of that section of scripture. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Think about that. All of your days were written down in God's book before they came to be. Your eyes saw my unformed body. He knew who I was before I was. I'm, a, I'm, I'm from the mind of God. You are from the mind of God and manifest in flesh. And he knew before the beginning of time, you and me. He said to Jeremiah, <clears throat> before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, the great prophet. And before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God had a work for him to do that he knew before he was born. In fact, he created him for that one purpose, to preach to the people. As difficult as that would be for Jeremiah, the suffering servant, 
And that applies to each and every one of us as believers in Christ. He knew us before we were formed. He knew us before we were born. He knew what the purpose was that he put us in this life for. And ultimately, it is to bring glory to him through his son, Christ Jesus. So that applies to us all. God prepared in advance as our way of life. And so as we work to cultivate the Spirit of God in our hearts through His Word and through our fellowship with one another, which is very important, then we are able to keep in step with the Spirit. God can speak to us and give us, open our eyes to what it is that He has made us to do. Now, Jeremiah's calling was quite consuming. Ours might be as simple as saying a kind word or giving a hand to someone in need or being a blessing by just bringing peace to a situation. And it's ironic because my wife was in that circumstance just yesterday. A former student who has been very troubled and tried to commit suicide and was violent with her mother and told Kathy she wanted to meet her and be with her. This is a, te uh, a student from two years ago. And she was able to go there and minister to her. And we prayed that she would have the words to say, the understanding of what to say, when to say it, when to, when to listen, when to speak. And she brought peace into that circumstance and situation, encouragement and love. And that is available to each one of us to do, should our eyes be open to that. But the world throws so much at us, the demands, requests, requirements of life, can take our minds and get them off of that. But as we seek to keep in step with the Spirit, we understand that we are keeping in step with the Spirit as the Spirit is cultivated within us and we bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I want to pray. Before we pray, Bill and Danielle got up and left. It didn't look like Bill was feeling well, so let's pray for Bill. Lord, we don't know what's going on, but I pray for Bill and for Danielle, whatever is happening. I pray that Bill would receive the comfort and the physical relief that he needs at this moment in time. Lord, have your hand upon him. Thank you for his testimony and his faith and faithfulness. And Lord, I pray for each one of us that we would understand that we were created by you, knit together in our mother's womb, and now in Christ Jesus, we are being recreated into new creatures, which you have manifest so that we might be the doers of good things, which you call good. So open our hearts and our minds to see the things that you have prepared in advance for us to do and help us to walk in them. May our days begin with that. Small prayer, Lord, help me to see today what it is that you have for me to do as a good work in my life. And I'll give you the praise and the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen.